hi welcome back to my channel I'm Claire for anyone who doesn't know me and if you're coming back for a second time or a third time then welcome back today I have a really inspirational story I want to tell with you it's not my story it's actually a story from somebody called Dr Kate Allett and she basically attended our university about two weeks ago now and gave us a really really inspirational keynote um, talk and it basically was her inspirational story. So I'm going to share that with you today, hoping that it will inspire some of you out there because it really, really inspired me. When I was listening to the story, I just was so inspired by what she had to say and the incredible journey that she went through. I think sometimes it's easy to be demotivated and think you can't do certain things, but the reality is we can do whatever we put our mind to and I think it's knowing that if you have a goal that you want to reach and even if people say you won't be able to do it, you can't do it, just continue and try your best to be able to do it because you definitely can get to that goal such place if you want to. So I'm going to start with her story and hopefully I'll remember it the best I can. I took some notes on it because I just didn't want to leave out uh, a key point of it. So if I'm looking down, that's where I'm looking. So basically in 2010, this woman called Kate had a brain stem stroke, which is a very like severe type of stroke. And she was put then in a medically induced coma. And just to give a bit of a backstory, she was 39 at the time. She had three children who were six, eight and 10. So obviously a very young family that she had to look after. And she was also running a crazy amount each week. So she was very fit and healthy. So this stroke came completely out of nowhere. The stroke was so severe that she was brought straight to ICU and was put in a medically induced coma. When she woke up from the medically induced coma, she was um, trapped in her own body which we call locked in syndrome and it's basically where um, you can't communicate but you know what's going on so she said she could think, see, feel and look but not speak so what she found really difficult was that people nurses and doctors which makes me really sad would go in and they would talk over her and talk about her obviously she couldn't verbally communicate but there would be different ways she they could have got her to communicate but they didn't try with her they just looked over her and didn't make an effort to try and see look into her eyes or anything like that so basically they weren't addressing her emotional needs so obviously they were as she says in her um speech she's very grateful for obviously keeping um her alive she's very grateful for the nurses and doctors but she didn't feel like her emotional needs were being met because they weren't looking into her eyes, they weren't trying to make an effort with her. Then one day her really good friend came in and realised that she kind of had a flutter in her eye. So she tried to come up with a system that she could um, talk to Kate with. So it was one blink or flutter for no and two blink slash flutters for yes. And this was their first form, this was Kate's first form of communication of any sort since she'd been locked in. This meant a lot to Kate because it meant she could communicate to her best friend somehow. Even if it wasn't speaking, there was still that human interaction that she was lacking for so long. Week eight of her recovery from her brainstem stroke, she decided that she was going to try her very, very hardest to move her right thumb. Bear in mind she could not move any um, limb, nothing. The only thing that was able to move was her eye little flutter. Everything else was completely paralysed. So on week eight she moved her right thumb three millimetres and this was her kind of epiphany moment of you know what if I can move my right thumb it's the same as all the other muscles and whatever and ligaments and tendons whatever in my body then I can move the rest so it started out with her right thumb and then she worked on all her different fingers and eventually got all her fingers moving then she said if I can do my hands which are obviously closer to my brain now let's try my feet so then she started moving her toes one by one and getting them strengthened up 
after she'd made these improvements with moving her thumbs and toes and everything, she had a medical review. And basically, on this day, she was wheeled into the medical review in her wheelchair um, with, a, with a headrest, and she was wheeled in, and this is where the nurses, the doctors, the neuro consultants, the neurophysios, um, all of these people were around, and her husband, were around this really big table, and she was really excited to go to this review because she said, I'm doing so well, this is what she thought, I'm doing so well, I'll be able to get more physio and blah, blah, blah. But when she arrived at the review, she basically sat down and the first thing the consultant said was, there is no improvement, um, like it's not looking good kind of thing, like really, really negative. And then day by day, the nurses say, no significant improvement, no improvement, still the same as yesterday. Really, really negative things. And basically we're telling the husband that she's probably gonna stay in this vegetated state and things like that, which is just horrible for her to listen to because obviously she could understand and she had, Kate had a tracheostomy at the time, which is just placed here. And basically Kate was getting so angry and agitated listening to what the doctors and nurses had to say that she started blowing through her tracheostomy. And then they wheeled her back to her room, hoisted her back into bed. And like she said, like a sack of potatoes. A friend came in later that day and the friend got out the letter board. And basically Kate wrote, stand by me on the letter board and her friend didn't fail to do that and her friend stood by her the whole way. Kate said that the most important thing to do in these types of situations is find out what is important to that person. Also treat them with empathy and look into their eyes even if you think they're non-verbal and might not be able to speak to you like they're still a person and they're still alive so we want to look into their eyes we want to just make them feel like a person and not like this burden or this person just sitting in a hospital bed for weeks and weeks on end. When she moved her thumb, that was week eight of being in ICU. And she describes everyone around her, bells going off, ringing, people dying around her, people shouting. Like this horrible environment that people thought that she didn't understand, that she wasn't aware of. But she heard and saw everything, which... I just can't imagine what it would be like but she is the most inspirational person and I just think her story is absolutely fascinating. So from ICU, she was in ICU for I think nine weeks, from ICU she went to a rehab centre so she was really excited about this because Kate thought that if I go to the rehab centre I'll be able to get so much more rehab done because in ICU because she couldn't move that much, they weren't doing that much. Um, physio with her so she said oh if I go to the rehab center I'll be able to do lots so she got to the rehab center and Kate was no longer nurse one by one one-on-one -on -one, as she was in the ICU she was nurse 27 to one which is uh, like a huge huge difference so Kate said that she wasn't getting the physio that she required and wanted and started working by herself and by herself and these were Kate's two goals, to be able to walk out of rehab when her time was done there and also run on her one year anniversary. And because Kate is such an inspirational and determined woman, she got both of those goals and grabbed them by the horns and did them. So Kate walked four times further than she'd ever walked when she walked out of rehab and then on her exactly to the day on her one year anniversary of having a brainstem stroke, she did a little run on camera. And we saw all of this in our conference that we had when Kate was a speaker. If anybody else is interested in this story and wants to know more, Kate has actually published a TED talk, TEDx talk, which is absolutely crazy. The title of the TEDx talk is Voicing Inner Thoughts Matters. And if you're interested in watching that, then I'm gonna leave it in the first line of the description down below and you can go and watch it for yourself. I hope I did this story justice. It's There's a lot of detail to it, so I gave you the main points. But what I took from this is that 
if you want to do something, never give up, no matter what anybody says. So I hope I inspired at least one of you today. And if I did, then leave a comment below and I'd love to talk to you about this and answer any questions you have if I know the answer to them. But I'd highly recommend watching the TED Talk because I think that will just explain in depth. And she's such an amazing speaker. So it'd be great to listen to her. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.